friend of me, any me. All these neck neck just wanna be a mini me. All these neck neck just wanna be a mini me. All these neck neck just wanna be a mini me. Friend of me, friend of me, any me. All these neck neck just wanna be a mini me. All these neck neck just wanna be a mini me. All these neck neck just wanna be a mini me. Hey guys, welcome to the Archie Luxury Channel. And today, guys, I want to talk about rich people. And I don't mean the neighbor next door with the C-Class Mercedes. I'm talking really rich people. And I've got to tell you, but before we start, quick, 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 wristwatch, check, Rolex, Milgauss, Milgauss. Guys, I'm very fortunate being the pontiff, the Don, I get to meet a lot of people. Obviously, I go to where the dollars are, and people can buy my time by booking a session with me. I've managed to meet billionaires, decamillionaires, and a lot of pretenders. And I gotta tell you guys, with the up and coming divorce of Bill Gates, I thought it was time I, I made this fit video and people are coming out saying we never realized what a sleaze he was and blah 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 and all I can really say is they really have never really known really really rich people see there's the public face protected by PR and lawyers and then there is the the real person themselves now, I've got to tell you what I have found with all people of substantial wealth, whether it's inherited, whether it's self-made, or a bit of both. I've got to be totally, totally honest with you. Totally, totally honest with you. Um, these, these people are really assholes. Yes. Now, I don't mean that in a sense that they're like a Rodney Dangerfield asshole. Everyone, you know, I'm an asshole. Da, 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 da. No, these people are very highly manipulative psychopaths. And they will charm, manipulate the way <clears throat> to getting what they want. I had a uh, coffee with a very good friend of mine yesterday and uh, he he's actually he knows he knows one of the I'm not well okay one of the former CEOs of DuPont that's the famous chemical and the US conglomerate anyhow it was said that you know his friend who was the CEO Basically, all CEOs are psychopaths. Once you get to a certain level company, any of the top 500 companies, they're, they're really run by psychopaths. And I didn't say psychopathic killers. I meant psychopaths in the sense that they're pushing their career, their ego, they're self-centered, they're manipulative. Go, go, go. Most people, once they get to a certain level of wealth or success, will say, you know what, that's enough. I've kind of had it, but you've got to have a certain mindset to go further. And I've got to tell you, it's very interesting. The Bill Gates scenario has come out now. Everyone's saying, oh, how nasty he was sleeping with employees. Let me tell you, most of these companies, what what do you think this is? It's a sexual playground for the CEOs. That's how it is. Just without getting the sleaziness factor built in, that's why there is so many work relationships. You're working late with someone. You're, what happens is when you work very, very closely with somebody, you either fall in love with them or hate their guts. That's, that's generally the dynamic uh, if you are working with somebody. Long hours, overtime, and under pressure. 
And I've got to tell you, in all honesty, this this is this is this is um, this is a facts of life. And now, Bill Gates, it's coming out. He's this. He's that. Well, let me just tell you this. I know many, many super rich people, and the reason I say they're psychopaths is because when you first meet them, they're charming. They're really, really nice. They're really nice and they're charming. But I got to be totally honest with you. Some of them can be real, real jerks. Once you get to really know them and you're on, you know, which, what you would consider equal footing. Um, I never lick their ass. I got to be honest with you. People I've known who was very rich and successful, I've never licked their ass. Uh, unless, of course, they were throwing thousands of dollars at me. Then, then it's all different, of course. But, you know, um, I've got to be totally honest with you. I, 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 as Martin Luther King, you know, I don't judge people by, by their color of their skin. I judge them by their, their character. And uh, I thought I was on equal footing with some of these people. And once you get to know them and you've, you've broken down the friend, you, you, you are friends with them, you, you realize a lot of these people are fucking assholes. That's right. And they're, they're not only are they fucking assholes, they're actually mean spirited sons of bitches. And I, I find them extremely, some of these people, I, I've got a really strong distaste for them. I remember one guy, I'm not going to name names here to protect the, the guilty, but he was a, uh, I, I think he was more of a pretender than a really rich person. I think he was probably, oh, five million US, but he was pretending to be a hundred million. You know, the only thing worse than uh, someone who's worth a hundred million is someone pretending to be worth a hundred million. And, you know, he, he's got all the, cra the, the psychopath, psychopath traits. He charmed me in. He wanted certain things from me, uh, which is fine. He wanted a photo with me. And that's, that's all good there. But when I really got to know him, he was a fucking asshole. And I remember one time he, he, um, he, referred to my world time he said oh it's a bit small the small hands dad he made a really crass comment and i thought okay i was just i just thought what a wanker and then he went so that was a 5110 then he went and bought a new york version of the world time the five the new york version was the 5230 which was a third which really it had throws to the 5110. The sizing was, because the world times, 37 mils, 39 and a half, then 38 and a half. So the New York version, it, it played on the 5110. And he thought it was great and fantastic. And I thought, what a wanker. He criticized mine. It's like somebody who's got a Mercedes Benz say they got an SL and they criticize they criticize the pagoda for being underpowered you think what an idiot yes the new SL is amazing but the pagoda is garbage you you for real and if you go back further before the pagoda was the gold wing is that garbage as well these people are morons um and I I gotta be totally honest with you uh, it's these rich, these super rich people, they present a certain face. They've got a lot of PR spin, but when you actually get to know them, you can see they're actually assholes. A lot of them are actually assholes. I'd say 90% of the people worth over, over, 10 million US dollars are assholes, uh, deep, deep down. Now that's okay because I'm an asshole myself. 
and I quite get on with assholes. But I've got to be totally honest with you, they are self-opinionated. So I remember years ago I had a, I worked for one of my friends and he was he became he became worth five million US dollars from from selling watches. And I could never understand, he was just so driven, so money focused, so money was his God. And I mean, I thought money was my God, but man, this guy put me to shame, put me to shame. Just so focused, go, go, go. And it's kind of, um, he could be extremely charming. He could be extremely nice. He could be, he's, he had charisma. But when you really broke him down, he was a fucking asshole, self-opinionated. He would crawl through sewage for a deal. And it's funny, I've got another friend who's probably worth three to four million Australian. And he's not, as big an asshole as the guy were five million US. He is reptilian. He's got reptilian features. If you if you lift his shirt up, you can see scales. But he's not a complete asshole. He's actually quite nice. And I I think maybe the niceness is what is pulling him back from being a developed growing into the complete asshole worth ten million US dollars. And you know the more the more the money, the, the bigger the ego, the bigger uh, everything just grows exponentially. And this is the thing. It's a bit like um, winning the lotto. Or if you give someone a lot of money, if they come into a lot of money, if they make a lot of money, or if they win a lot of money, or they inherit a lot of money, or they just defraud a lot of money, they, their problems or successes are multiplied, okay? So, whereas before they might have some certain character flaws, well, when they've got a lot of money, they can get away with a lot more. Money solves a lot of problems. Um, and, you, you know, this is, this is the whole thing. Money ex multiplies success or failure. And it doesn't make a person bad, but and say a much poorer, say a working standard working class guy, he really can't afford to take Veronica on reception away for the weekend. He can't afford to fly her interstate and stay at a nice hotel, fly business, um, go to a nice restaurant. He can't really afford that. See, so it kind of nips that relationship in the bud. But the guy who's worth several million, he's got points and he's got this and that. He, he could just do it, goes away for the weekend. She has an amazing time. And, you know, you get yourself into a lot more trouble. The, someone who doesn't have those financial means, it doesn't mean the people without the financial means are any less evil. Possibly if they had the money, they'd be even worse. But it goes to show you that money itself can be a multiplier. And I, I tend to say, look at the Bill Gates situation. Uh, I'd be disappointed if he didn't have a few mistresses and, and ladies. Why not? He's worth a hundred, over 100 billion US dollars. What did you think would happen? What did you seriously think would happen? I mean, it's a letdown if he hasn't had a bit of a play or a fiddle, isn't it? I mean, come on. Um, that's What's the point of all that money if you don't have a few bit of side pussy? I mean, I mean that's a given. That's a given. And that's the thing. I've got to tell you, I've met a lot of wealthy people. I've got to tell you, out of all the wealthy people I've met, <clears throat> I would say 95% had mistresses or side pussy. And if they didn't have a current mistress or a side pussy, they were in the process of getting the next next side pussy. 
And I mean, money solves so many things. You know, you can afford to lease a secret apartment. You can afford to have a second or third car just for going out in. You can afford to pay for hotels. You can afford so many things. And if she accidentally got pregnant, well, you could put her in the apartment and you could continue to service her whilst looking for another mistress. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of these things here, human nature. And sometimes you look at the Hollywood stars and you see them always, their marriage lasts a short time and then they, they get divorced. You think, geez, you know, maybe fame and fortune isn't the answer. But often what happens is they have so much money, the successful ones have a lot of money. When they get into an argument, they say, fike you, I'm gone. Whereas in a middle class household, so say a household worth a million, ooh, you said to the wife, I can't stand you, I'm leaving. Well, you'd have to sell the home. You'd have to get rid of the watch collection. Uh, that sports car would, would be sold. And you'd go back to being living in a studio or apartment and paying alimony and child's oh yucky 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 and that's the whole thing but when you're worth 20 million thank you here's five hundred thousand. get out of my life or here's a million get out of my life hopefully you've got a prenup and that's the whole thing it's not so much that they are more unlucky in love they've got f you money to save i don't like your your mouth get out of my life and they've got the money to make it happen so i don't think that hollywood celebrities or the super rich are necessarily worse than other people but they're able to they are able to make their dreams come true get rid of somebody they can they can pay to just get out of my life i can't stand you they're able to to fix problems that normal people couldn't fix so readily um so you know, Spike, you know, Larry David on um, Curb Your Enthusiasm. He opened the Spite coffee shop, Mocha Joe's, Mocha Joe's. See, normal person couldn't do that. Ah, fake you, I'll give you a bad Google review. That's it. You know, what can you do? So it's, this is the reality. From meeting a lot of really rich people, I'd have to say most of them are psychopathic assholes. If you want to be... I mean, they write all these books, think positive, do this, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that works to a certain extent, okay? Okay, you can, you can become, you know, you can become comfortable, but middle class comfortable, not Mercedes-Benz SL comfortable. And I got to tell you, you meet people, say anyone who drives an SL, they're all touchy. They're all very, very touchy, very, very, um, you know, kit glove, kit glove, kit glove. So... What do I think? Of course I want money. Of course I want oodles of it. But, you know, it's one of these things. You just need to take it slowly and see what comes. So, um, yeah, that's the way it goes, guys. That is the way it goes. That's, um, that's, that's, and as for Bill Gates, look, I wouldn't be too hard on Bill. Bill, Look, what, what do you honestly expect? Do you blame the poor guy? He's playing a bit, you know, so what? It's human nature to have a bit of a fiddle. You know, we like to have a play. We like to sniff around. You know, I I got I mean, I've been married a couple of times, you know, in market. You, you, the thing about being a billionaire, it's like meeting all the women are constantly in marketing phase. I mean, <laughs> who could turn that down? You know, the wife doesn't want to give you a cuddle in the morning or, you know, you can't touch her breasts. Well, don't worry. There's Vanessa. There, there's Laura. There's, there's there's Fiona. There's a whole horde of women lining up for you, for you. It's the facts of life, Charlie. It's the facts of life. And, um, yeah, that's don't be too hard on Bill Gates. He's he's not a bad guy. Bill Gates is not a bad guy. And uh, you know what 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 do you want? We're humans. We're humans, guys. So uh, yeah, that's just my my video on on really rich people being psychopaths and assholes. So I've met a few really nice ones. I mean, as long as you accept the psychopathic nature of them, 
Some can be really nice. I met one guy, he's really, really sweet guy. I still chat to him occasionally. Uh, you know, they, they, they can be really nice dudes. So, um, yeah. Okay, guys, that's the video. Tell me what you think, guys. Put some comments b b below. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. Remember, I got other channels. The Archie Luxury live stream channel. I broadcast every day. The Paul Pluto channel. I do the paid watch reviews. And this is Archie Luxury for general content. Hi, guys. Archie Luxury. And who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre-owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. Like, subscribe, and tell your friends, and don't be afraid to get a paid review. 50 US dollars for a paid review. It helps me stay full time on YouTube, and I will see you in the next one. 50 US dollars paid review. I can't survive on Google Ads. I need your support. And guys, you could also sponsor me on Patreon. Patreon allows you to pay as little as a dollar a month to keep me on YouTube. Hey guys, Archie Luxury, who do I recommend for watches in Brisbane and Sydney? Vintage Watch Co, that's correct. Vintage Watch Co in Brisbane Arcade in Brisbane and the Strand Arcade in Sydney. Vintage Watch Co, Brisbane and Sydney. Ronnie, I've known him since the late 90s. Ronnie is a top bloke. Luke is a great guy. Vintage Watch Co. That is who I recommend in Australia. Check out Vintage Watch Co. and the guys' amazing range of watches. They also do service and repairs. Vintage Watch Co. That is where the pontiff goes. You know, some of my paddocks came from Vintage Watch Co. That's right, guys. Vintage Watch Co.